Another day is here, and you're ready for it. What to wear? Check. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Check. Planning for what's next and how to save for it? That's where Bank of America can help. For your financial to-dos, Bank of America has experts ready to help get you closer to your goals. Get started at one of our local financial centers or 24-7 in our mobile banking app. Find a location near you at bankofamerica.com slash talk to us. What would you like the power to do? Mobile banking requires downloading the app and is only available for select devices. Message and data rates may apply. Bank of America and a member FDIC. When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Kroger, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make shopping Kroger worth it every time. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. Thanks for choosing this free Anfield Index podcast. If you'd prefer to listen to this or any of our other shows without adverts, then now's the time to check out Anfield Index Pro. With AI Pro, you can supercharge your entire listening experience. You'll not only get all of our podcasts without the ads, but you'll have them far faster with our quick publish feature available exclusively for subscribers. AI Pro also puts you in the heart of our sound studio, with an option to listen to many of our shows live and interact with the podcasters in real time as the shows are recording. Upgrading couldn't be easier. AI Pro is available on all popular podcast platforms. Just head on over to AnfieldIndexPro.com and get started today. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, wherever you're doing, and welcome to another episode of Big Decisions. I'm Dave Davis, ladies and gents, coming to you from Pretty gloomy Edinburgh, to be honest. The sunshine is gone. It's a bit muggy. That's the word, isn't it? One of the muggies where it's like cast over, got that tropical heat type of thing. But there is no sun, there is clouds in the sky. To be honest, though, the first big decision, I could just lie to you and said this is episode number XYZ. Not a freaking clue. So it's just another episode of big decisions. Here to talk about all the things that concern Liverpool at the moment, all the stories, but the decisions to be made around them. And probably absolutes is what I'm thinking people are looking at now. People are looking for absolutes. When Liverpool are not playing, things can tend to get a bit more dramatic on things like social media, can't they? With people are labelling X, people are labelling Y, it's definitives. Crap, good. All the, you know, doesn't seem to be any in between, no nuance, no analysis. So that's probably the factor, I would say, in the stories at the moment. So what's the first big decision? Cody Gappo. Is Cody Gappo set to be Liverpool's next or new left winger, if you want to almost call it that, for the season? And even that statement will get people's heckles up. Cody Gappo, there's a lot of positives in recent times. He had a strong end to the season. He's done quite well for Holland, hasn't he? He's got two goals, so, you, you know, in three games for... Holland in the group stages at the Euro. So that is to shine. Especially the goal the other day. That one where he kind of controls it well, cuts in, and curls it with his right foot into the corner. Certain things to like about Cody Gakpo at the moment. And that's led to a lot of people commenting, hasn't he? And it's kind of linked to the whole Luis Diaz situation where a lot of people are expecting Luis Diaz to leave. So who's going to play left wing? Who's going to come in? But all the recent players have been linked with are left footed right winger. So who's going to play left wing? And Gap post named by a lot of those people. And it does fascinate me this because I've seen people tweet or even some accounts like the people been doing him down, downplaying him, blah, 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 not giving him his thing or all this type of thing. Again, we're in absolute territory because if we're going to argue the pros, we've got to balance the cons. And what are the cons? that he's not always shown Cody Gatto. There's been a question around that physicality at times this season, or last season just gone, I should say. That's fair. When he plays on that left wing, it's also fair to say that he always wants to come inside, doesn't it? That's what we've seen specifically in the Euros and for Liverpool. That if you were defending Cody Gatto, you'd be saying, like, show him on his right, show him on his right. That's all he wants to do. He can't get or offer him the left, sorry. The other way around, even what I'm saying. Yeah, offering the left wing, he doesn't want to go. And if you look at even that couple of times the other day in that Holland match where they were beaten by Austria, 
he really was reluctant to go on his left, wasn't he? There was that one where he kind of half tried it and then tried that weird travail, which went massively wrong. There was one at the end where Virgil had gone up and it flicked on. He thought it's gone into his path. If he hits it with his left, it's perfect. But he turned out it was a big chance blown. He didn't want to do it. So that is a concern. He, he's got some good stats, but not some great stats. People will argue he could be a great player in that role. My argument would be, in the balance of absolutes, the big decision around Cody Gakpo, Cody Gakpo could be a very useful asset for Liverpool on the left-hand side, that left wing role, if you want to call it that, if we're going to play a 4-2-3-1. I'd expect him to contribute goals, assists. However, there is limitations to the player in that regard. I don't think he'll ever be great. I, I could be wrong. I'd love to have these words rammed down my throat. Some of you will be desperate to say, he's this, he's that. I don't think he's... We're not 12. Bad. I don't think he's great either. I think he can be a very good asset for Liverpool and for Arnie Slot on that left side. In terms of things Liverpool have to do this summer, there's a lot bigger priorities than the left. You have to be honest about that. And Gakpo plays a part in that story as well. Because him on the left, Jota on the left, even some Bosley potentially going out there. This is assuming Luis Diaz does go, which I think many expect. Nothing is guaranteed there. So Cody Gakpo is having a good Euros. I think he can be a good option and an alternate on that left-hand side. Do I ever think he'll be a world beater if people want to measure it by that? No. That's why I'm not talking in terms of absolutes there. In terms of absolutes as well, England have been using Trent as a scapegoat, haven't they? That's been an absolute no doubt about that. And that article, I mean, let's just be clear on this. It was in the Times. It was written by Paul Joyce. So Paul Joyce submits his report, his copy, as they'd say, in that journalist side, to the Times. And their editors, sub-editors, will do all their bits. At no point, be crystal clear, does Paul Joyce say, put that photo of Trent in there. Paul Joyce is a very intelligent man, as we know. Paul Joyce isn't looking and going, yeah, eight minutes, but we can, I know he played about eight, ten minutes, but we can make some headlines, some money. That's not something he's involved in. He will not be selecting a picture of Trent Alexander-Arnold. So you can come for the times for that, and quite rightly, there's a lot of questions why, when Trent plays less than ten minutes, you have chosen to go with him as your photo. That is an absolute that should be discussed and isn't wrong, you know, to question. It's right to question that. However... Paul Joyce is not the driver of that, not for one single second. At the same time with absolutes, they can't use Trent as a scapegoat anymore, can they, England? Because it only plays eight, ten minutes, so I still saw people saying it was horrendous. I mean, he put a few good balls in. I mean, his shot was just wide enough. It's eight minutes. Why are you hyper-analyzing all the other turd that was absolutely served up by a lot of established players? But again, the absolute that Paul Joyce do not be coming for Paul Joyce for that article. Absolutes as well over one player. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. I don't care. Ricardo Calafiori, Italy, Bologna, left back, centre back, hybrid. That's the word, isn't it? The the word that everyone likes. And understandable, those players are useful in this modern lineup. The terms of the Ake's, the Guardios, they have their real use for uses for City. There is a lot to like about Calafiori a lot to like his aerial dual success I mean, you look in Serie A oh, it's over 70% that's getting in towards real top level territory bear in mind VVD was around 80 that's really up there with our behemoth of centre backs there's a lot to like he's carrying there is a lot to like in terms of ball carrying the way he brings it out some, some people describe it as Joel Matipes with his left foot speed I wouldn't say he's electric and the stats back that up. I'm not going to give you everything on this one because me and Bart's are going to run him on transfer market metrics. So I'm not giving you all the, how the sausages made. Don't get carried away on a Wednesday afternoon. But his speed is very, very good. It's not electric for a defender, let's be clear, but it's very, very good. He's tall. He's good in duels. There is a lot to like about this player. Here's the big decision. You can go all in cardio on this point I know some people haven't I'm not criticizing that all I'm saying in terms of absolute we've not had 
an absolute quality link. We are miles away, and I'd love to be getting proven wrong. I, I would like this player. There's a lot I like about him. Please be crystal clear on that. This is not a dig in any way at the player. But Correa Bologna is the only article I've seen of real note. I know someone's going to say James Horncastle has mentioned him, and that's important to say in terms of Liverpool and other clubs are aware of him, but that's all it is at this stage. So when we talk in terms of absolutes, I would love to be proved wrong tomorrow and that Liverpool put in a bit of a decent size for Calafiore. But again, in terms of absolutes, he's with Italy. He's at the Euros right now. So that plays into the factor as well. I just worry in terms of big decisions. There's a danger for me of this being that manifestation transfer. The ones we all want to happen, the ones we all assume are going to happen, but just doesn't. And this isn't about players we definitively like. I've no doubt, as people have said, we're watching, we're looking at Calafiore, but that's the big decision for me. I'm just conscious about going too far in on this because I know some players, have, or people, sorry, have gone well in on this player. I'm not criticising them. There's just that hesitancy at the moment until we get a solid, tenable link. That's all I am thinking. So that's Gakpo, that's Trent in England, Paul Joyce, Calafiore, Christ, we're going everywhere in a short period. And we're even going to go to the ticket office and Liverpool and the story over this. Now, let's just be crystal clear on this. I can see people going on and about, oh, they member sales and blah, 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 all those types of things. Let's nail this over dates and expectation. If you are one of the lucky ones that wants to go to Liverpool or can, is entitled to, brilliant. If you want to enter the ballot and register, that's the key word, the ballot for the ticket, that registration opened at 10 o'clock today, 10 a.m. Wednesday, the 26th of June. That does not mean you have to rush for the gates. It is just to register, okay? That registration closes on Tuesday, the 2nd of July, 8 a.m. So if someone asks you in the simplest terms, how long have you got to register for the ballot? Just register. You've got till Tuesday, the 2nd of July. In fact, to make six days, 8 a.m. Tuesday, the 2nd of July. So when people say, I need to, I've seen people say, I'll get it. Do it tonight, it'll be a day, tomorrow. Well, you, you've got all the way up till Tuesday, the 2nd of July at 8 a.m. to register. So what's my big decision over this? Just that you have to listen to it. It's up to you. But. Stop panicking. Stop fanning the flames online and saying, oh, people are having nightmares doing this. We've got ages to register. It's registration. It's nothing else. The sales, just the actual sales themselves, although poor are confirmed. If you are obviously successful in the ballot, and then that's a whole different discussion. I'm not going into that because people are going to ask a joke. Oh, I'm not getting into that discussion. Dates-wise, if you are successful, Tuesday the 16th for disabled members, Wednesday the 17th of July for members with 13 or more, and then Thursday the 18th for everyone else who was guaranteed a seat successful in the ballot. But just in terms of no need to even remotely consider melting down and why people are doing it to fan the flames, just don't. Yeah, you've got till Tuesday the 2nd of July, 8am, to register for the relevant games. That's all you need to be thinking. Cubs, that's tickets taken care of. Outgoings, there's more links today, isn't there? Florian Plettenberg talks about Tyler Morton and how Leipzig are looking at a loan with an option to buy. They've had that discussion. There was This is Anfield talking about um, Fabio Carvalho and having many options. Nothing I suspect too big is going to happen in terms of real movement this week. And I know it sounded hypocritical on the next bit. We'll come to that anyway. However, next week... Liverpool are back in trading, aren't they? Arnie Slot's pre-season begins. That's when things will start to move, but they'll start to move slowly. So all people say in absolute, so people are desperate for transfer. Not everyone, it might not be you, but a lot of people say, oh, this needs to happen. Let's be clear. Arnie Slot's going to look at Tyler Morton, Fabio Carvalho. Even probably to extent, we know what's going to happen here. Queeve Cal, basically all... The youngsters like Carvalho, Morton, Luke Chambers has been mentioned. You know, he's got to make his assessment to then go, do I keep? 
do we maybe loan because I think they could make, or do we look to sell? Is it, you know, and he's going to want to have the sit downs, isn't he? The speak, the chats, whatever you want to call them. I'll say speeches, chats is the right word to those players. That is how it's going to work. That is going to happen next week because some of them are going to say, I think I want to move on. Whatever they're all going to say, those are coming back. So not this week. Next week will be the start of movement. So people saying this needs to be done. We need to see this. We're not seeing enough this quickly. I don't know why people are saying that. For the life of it, it escapes me. Not even all the transfer windows are open till July, people. Yeah, there's tournaments going on. There's Copper Americas, there's Euros. You know, Copper Americas only just start. There's many things that can happen. There's clubs with PSR issues. So in terms of Liverpool transfers, all I'm going to say is don't really expect too much to solidly happen. And I'm trying to phrase that carefully. This isn't trying to sound clever. That Again, I'm not going to give it you all because we've got things like the transfer show, but having asked and queried about the Eze rumours from Crystal Palace... Liverpool do have an interest in this player. Let's just be crystal clear on that. This is someone that Liverpool are looking at. There's a lot of clubs looking at him as well. City, Spurs, all the characteristics are right. It depends how you see it, because I think it doesn't mean that, that if Eze was to be one, that that's the end of a left footed right winger. But I understand what people are thinking, is this not a bit similar to players we've already got? I wouldn't say that, but in terms of profile it's right to think, where would we use him? Left wing? Attacking midfield? Like, you know, could he not sub balls? Harvey? It, it's right to have those questions. It's also right to look at possibly things like, and I want to be clear on this, his injury record is a disastrous. I've seen people say that. Yes, he had a muscle injury last season where he missed five games, and he had that big Achilles tendon a good few years ago, which kept him out. So maybe his body is good. He hasn't played as many games as your standard top level 25 and that's the age it plays a part doesn't it people think hold on he's 25 26 is that not older than we'd normally buy is that not older than the player we would go in for on paper yes but let's just be clear about some major signings that were all made what do genie allison and Salah all have in common they were 25 when the Liverpool signed them van dyke was 26 so just ruling out a player on his age like that is not that simple. He doesn't have the minutes in his legs of like a, a top sort of 26-year-old who's played all that way through. And he already turns 26 next week as well. So you want to factor that in. This is also, I, I sometimes like to talk about these. I'm just going to be honest because I don't always watch as much foreign football as other people. I, I don't pretend or lie about us. I know this player's this, this. I just don't. As I've seen a lot this season, he is an exciting player. There's no two ways about it. I like him, and I like that someone who you know gets you off your seat a little bit. I know people wanted to lease say and all that, but let's just focus on Eze for a minute. A lot to like about him. Does get goals and assists. And interestingly enough, from a bit of digging around Eze, 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 sorry, the comment I got was, it might be interesting that if this all does happen, there's a lot of ifs to get there, that Liverpool may look to use him as a Calvin Stengs at Feyenoord. If anyone's asking me that, Calvin Stengs is a Feyenoord player. Where's Arnie Slard come from? That's why I was using that terminology. It's not something I said, something I was told. I'm not going to pretend I know anything about Calvin Stengs, but if you want to do your own research in the meantime, that's how it was put to me, that Liverpool could be looking at him in that essence. Okay? So... I'm, it doesn't mean we're signing, it doesn't mean we're close, and you can argue I'm hypocritical, but my big decision over Eze is, from what I've been told, there's things in this, and it's worth listening or keeping an eye on. So those who are looking for sort of transfer updates, and I know you're going to argue me hypocritical, but talks about the order, the style of things, but yeah, just keep an eye on Eze at Crystal Palace. By the way, we're not going to be the only ones in the race as well. Spurs have been heavily linked with him. Arsenal, you know, City have even been linked with that. There's going to be a lot of clubs interested in Eze. He is a very talented player. I've got question marks, I told you there, but one to keep an eye on. So there you go, ladies and gents. Gakpo, the left wing, Trent, England, Paul Joyce, Calafiore. Tickets, no need to melt down. Registrations, sales, 
outgoings from Morton, Carvalho, Kelleher, all the way through to potential of Eze. That was a lot covered for you in not the longest period of time. So there you go, ladies and gents. Wednesday, the 26th of June. Enjoy your day. That was a special episode of Big Decisions. We hope you enjoyed listening to this Anfield Index show. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel so future podcasts find their way to your device automatically. There's nothing quite like fan engagement, and we'd love to know what you think of anything discussed on this show. The best way to get in touch is over on our free Discord community, where both podcasters and listeners debate the hottest LFC topics 24-7. Sign up free now at anfieldindex.com forward slash discord. You won't regret it. You can also follow us on Twitter at Anfield Index and find us on Facebook by searching for Anfield Index. Oh, and before you go, we'd love it if you could leave us a five-star review on your favourite podcast app. It only takes a couple of seconds and it means the world to the people who create these free shows. Sports Social Podcast Network.